Welcome to the Heart of Hospitality podcast hosted by Duncan O'Rourke, CEO of Accor Northern Europe. Hospitality matters because it has heart. In this series, we'll be speaking to our guests to celebrate the moments and lives that make this sector so special and to spotlight the true heart of hospitality, people. In this episode, Duncan is joined by Mary Gostolo, a hospitality expert and the publisher of the Gostolo Report. They talk about Mary's worldwide travels, why companies should stay ahead of technology, and how hospitality welcomes individuality and creativity. Mary, good morning. And it's an absolute pleasure, and throughout those many years that we know each other, um, and just for everybody, Mary, of course, is the owner and editor of the Gostolo Report, which offers uh, very insightful market intelligence for the industry. Uh, it's well read, it's well received. It goes even beyond that to offer great insights, news, and more. Mary is an absolute luxury travel expert, uh, uh, and I've known uh, Mary throughout my career. And it's in with great pleasure because it's the first time I'm actually asking Mary some questions there. And I must say, Mary, as well, you have been on a personal note very, very kind in. Your, your valuable advice to me as part of my career. And, and so I really do take a great, immense joy that you've, you've offered to go through this with me there and, and, and talk a little bit about the, the industry. Mary, what attracted you most to the travel and hospitality sector? Well, first of all, Duncan, let me tell you who I am. For those of you, the many people around the world who are, who are Duncan followers, and they're probably wondering, you're all wondering who Mary Gostolo is. I describe myself as concierge to the hotel sector around the world. Actually, we could expand that to the three C's of life. I'm concierge. I'm a caregiver. You've no idea, Duncan, how many of your colleagues need a little bit of support because actually it's a very lonely life being the performer that you all are. And then I'm a communicator. Please don't call me media. Please don't call me a journalist. Please don't call me a press person. I am a communicator in that when I think something needs to be shared, I will share it. But unlike so many of the other communicators with small c's, I am also more like, I think, a doctor or a personal consultant. There we've got another C in that I know when to keep quiet. You asked me how I got into it or what attracted me to it. Well, it, it just kind of grew. Um, I was, to cut a long story short, I was doing a woodcutting course and I unfortunately jabbed the knife into my hand and blood poured out everywhere. And the person next to me in the course said, oh, let me mop it up for you. Cut long story short, that led to me being asked to do a hotel magazine, which led to me being invited to be a mystery shopper. Now, mystery shopper required masses of keep quiet. It was clandestine, another C. And you know, Duncan, the best way of not being caught out is to be very open. Funnily enough, my husband who was also doing it at the time, when we were in, let's say, somewhere in the middle of Africa, he would keep very quiet, the proverbial head down. I, on the other hand, always made an excuse to get behind front desk to uh, check on various things, and nobody ever suspected me. 
And interestingly, it was my husband, not me, who was caught out in Vanuatu in the South Pacific when he was trying to keep the file that he was working on uh, quiet, not seen by anybody around him in the plane. But an astute person saw what he was up to and looked at the name on his baggage in the arrival hall at Sydney Airport, and Martin was caught out. I was never caught out. How? What attracted me to this? <laughs> well, I had actually worked in a pub long before I had any idea what I wanted to do in life, and I thoroughly enjoyed working in the pub. What still attracts me to it is that this is the best live performance in the world. Duncan, every day in hospitality is an experience to perform, is an, is an opportunity to uh, show creativity, to show tender loving care. And I'm attracted to it every single day, Duncan. No, indeed, indeed. And that's lovely. Mary, um, how did the, and you know, and then you've been very humble because you know it's wi widely read uh, in, in terms of all your C's. How did the Gostolo report start? All right. Well, I do many things. For instance, Gostolo report is, I guess, my Bible of luxury hospitality globally. Every week when we were both traveling the world, I used to do a typed letter to my mother and my father-in-law. Sorry, other way round. Anyway, they had a typed letter telling them where we were. And people began to see this and they said, we want this too. There were people, even in those days, who wanted to know about Vanuatu, for instance, and the incredible people that we met there. Oh, my goodness. The great Mishutushkin, the white Russian king of tie-dye, who invited me to have lunch with him at his beach house on a Saturday. And he, wearing two pairs of cracked glasses around his neck, wearing a full-length tie-dye muumuu, we sat on the beach, literally, with his table, its legs in the sand, we, I think there were four of us, we had a whole leg of lamb and at least one bottle of Verve Clico and there were some monkeys around and people <laughs> kind of enjoyed seeing this. So eventually the letter expanded. Well, and then I had to charge for it because I needed to pay for the postage. Well, that was a few years ago. And now, Duncan, the whole thing has, I hope, come up to 2021 and beyond in that Gostolo report has become, for an inner circle, a private members club. Time is getting shorter and shorter and shorter, which, of course, affects the hotel sector very much. And going back, I believe that I'm the communicator. I, you, you may call me um, ultra humble, but also, Duncan, I know that I can't do everything. I do have a following of 27,000 for my podcast, which shares inside views of great leaders of the sector. I'm thrilled to have spoken to you, Duncan, as well as some of the other great ACOR people. 
And I'm constantly working on new themes because two years ago, nobody really cared about the promotion of talent within the industry. Now it is such a crucial crisis that, for instance, during the forthcoming ILTM in Cannes, I will be putting out every day 10-minute thoughts on how to elevate the whole um, talent feeling, the philosophy, the culture. I'm really excited. For instance, I'm going to be talking to Christoph Thomas, my good friend who is general manager of Raffles Royal Monceau in Paris, about elevating the mindset of the lovely people he has working there through an informal academy, bringing in an arts awareness, more of an awareness of the fashion in the world, so that they feel even more elevated within themselves. I am constantly learning every day, Duncan. No, it's true. And we all are, Mary. And and, and obviously the hospitality uh, for me, for you, for, for all of us, really matters because it has a heart. And, and that's why actually why... I'm why we and you kindly agreed to do this with to do this podcast with with industry leaders just to show the heart of the sector and to, and to show um, the people who make it so special because as you mentioned attracting the talent is very very challenging now as well and you've been a, in a large contributor why do you think the hospita- hospitality sector is so special Mary well because it is the only um sector of life that i can think of immediately where the individual can do their own thing within the hospitality sector you can do whatever you want you're not going to make millions but Money is not everything. What you're going to get is boost your own feeling of self-importance. You're going to learn so much. You're going to learn about teamwork, which you don't get if you are blowing up balloons to make into a sculpture. You're going to learn about giving back which is what doctors, missionaries, we could say politicians, have learnt all their lives. What do you not learn about in hospitality? Well, you, I can't think of anything. And what we've got to do is to manage time better. This is all part and parcel of one of my missions at the moment, Duncan, is that we've got to enable all those involved in hospitality to feel happy with the management of their time. In the past, many general managers lived in hotels. Now, most of them definitely do not want to live in hotels. And it makes it rather sad that there are some leaders within the operational side of properties who um, forget about the fact that hotels operate 7-7, 24-7. They have no idea, for instance, uh, about their breakfast service. The only meal they're likely to have in a hotel is breakfast, and certainly it's probably likely to be the last meal they have. The last meal, And breakfast is not taken seriously enough. I'm, I'm thoroughly enjoying this. 
Look, we've seen a lot, Mary, you and I, and, and the industry. We've seen financial crisis. We've seen earthquakes, tsunamis, uh, terrorism, and that. But we have to we have to talk about this pandemic, this 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 COVID pandemic, which is really put the industry uh, on its knees for a while. And you know this is a wonderful, resilient industry. What do you think is the most exciting thing about this sector as we emerge from this worldwide pandemic? Oh, I think the most exciting thing, Duncan, by far, is the window of opportunity it opens up for everybody concerned. Let me start with owners. There are owners who are incredibly creative at this time. I was talking to an owner. I had dinner with an owner last week showing that he had eliminated a lot of the stuff in that property that wasn't really necessary. A lot of the sculptures, a lot of the artwork had been taken out. And this it, this helped with simplicity and this certainly made it easier for the operator to be able to clean the place from an operational point of view it has shown the importance of cleanliness i am finding that at luxury level there are many consumers who are traveling who do not want to be taught who do not want to be reminded of cleanliness because they're taking mm. it for granted and from the consumer it's given the opportunity to know that whoever you are giving your money to has thought of you and is going to do a good job the cruise industry the cruise sector is phenomenal in this. Now, they have a serious challenge because they have the confinement of cabins and they have very narrow corridors. Talking to a friend who's just come back from one cruise, he was amazed at the uh, priorities and how, yes, there are still all the experiences on a cruise, but instead of putting you two or three in a car to go and visit, let's say, the pyramids when the ship was in dock, uh, they gave the ship gave you your own car. Oh, and wow. there was constant mm -hmm. testing. Um, and this person, this friend of mine, felt so confident that actually he's going on another cruise in two weeks' time. It's oh, an lovely. opportunity for everybody. It is showing cre who is creative and who is not. Unfortunately, there are some who are not able to cope. What do you think that industry, where the people are not, what do you think the industry needs then today? It needs an adrenaline boost. Um, it, needs, it needs serum from a laboratory on its face to be able to say, that was last year. We're not doing last year. We're not doing last century. We are looking forward. We are not necessarily those who have had 30 to 40 years experience. Duncan, I get so cross when I am told about a hotelier who has over 30 years experience. Who cares? I Come want on. somebody who has ideas for today and for tomorrow to be able to pair technology, the great advance of data collection, of AI, of anticipation, with the extra personal service. Hospitality, as you know, is defined as a friendly and generous reception and entertainment of guests, visitors, strangers, 
And for me personally, as you know, and we've spoken many times, it's the most wonderful industry there is. Do you think there is a resistance to join this sector, this industry, and why? Because people don't know enough about it. And yes, there is a resistance. We still have the old image of you can only enter hospitality through two doors. One is to be slightly exclusive, understatement, and go to hospitality school. The other is to get a job as a dishwasher or a bell captain. And of course, you make you stand to make lots of money as a bellman, by the way, because the tips can be pretty big. We've got to get over that. Anybody can come in at any level. And we need more interchange. We need more input coming in from outside. We've got to put out a more positive message, Duncan. We need a call to be known more positively as a great employer, as a great team captain. We need to get hospitality up there. And we can do it by just constantly churning and putting out messages and giving the people who are part of this great life more of a say and more of a feeling of self-confidence. Indeed. And 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 you're right there. And and you know, there's a lot of talk about the industry building back better. Um, and it's not just about us. And you had mentioned that earlier about sustainability, about ESG and 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 I know it, I mean I know that Accord does that and has a very, very comprehensive program like everybody else does. But where you are right, we need to talk about it more, we need to communicate it better as an industry, as a whole. Uh, in interacting. Mary, listen, this has been absolutely fabulous. What I'm going to do now, as is tradition, I'm going to ask a couple of quick fire questions where there's one um, there's one word, one answer, um, and uh, okay. it's just fun for everybody fun, going through there. Your favorite country, you can't say where you live, your favorite country when you visit somewhere, what is your favorite country? Wherever I happen to be. Lovely. Best city? Ah, uh, the best city is one where the sun is shining. <laughs> this is going to be difficult. Your favorite chef? Oh, goodness. The one who doesn't expect me to eat Michelin three star. <laughs> Your favorite dish? Ah. That could would probably be burrata with little baby tomatoes, followed by wagyu beef made into a burger, but without the bun, but with a big salad. Ah, lovely. Mary, your favorite way to travel? Oh, well, I rather like a my back, actually. <laughs> I hope that's allowed. <laughs> of course it's allowed. Of course it's allowed. Um, and your favorite hotel? Ah, the one which has its gym open 24-7 and gives not only... Plenty of water, but also has a supply of fresh and perfect condition fruit. Lovely. Mary, listen, thank you so much for thank you so much for everything, Mary. It's been an absolute pleasure speaking with you. Uh, um, I really, really appreciate the time uh, you've taken for this. Uh, you've given tremendous, tremendous amount to this industry. You carry on doing it. And this is just another example. Thank you. Thank you, Duncan.
Heart of Hospitality was hosted by Duncan O'Rourke, CEO of Accor Northern Europe. To find out more about the people that make this sector so special, visit our website and find us on Instagram. Instagram.